Hello everyone, welcome back to Armitage Candle Company. My name is Kevin, and today's episode is gonna be a little bit different. Now I've been making candles for a while, and some of you by some small chance may even trust things that I have to say. So I want to recap a lot of the different lessons that I've learned over the past year, two years in making candles and how I think that they could benefit you because I think that a lot of these, if you're making candles for any extended period of time, eventually you're going to need to know this stuff. The first lesson is everyone needs an understanding of the fundamentals of candle making. And if you think about candles, like they're complicated. It's, it's a combustion system, meaning you have to balance oxygen and fuel and heat and you put all those things together and it can get a little weird. Now, a lot of people will criticize candle making or get into the craft and say, this isn't that hard. You just melt down wax, you add fragrance oil, stick a wick in it and you're good, right? Well, it feels like that sometimes. And as a candle maker, you'll read that and freak out a little bit like, oh my gosh, it really is just that. I'm, I'm really making too much of this. But the truth is, if you take that statement and you lay it on other industries, other crafts, other skills, it doesn't play out that well. Like baseball, that's just swinging a bat and hitting a ball, right? Or being a pop star, that's just singing a few notes, isn't it? Or if you think about track athletes, you just have to run, don't you? But with everything, there's nuances. There's little things that make those people more successful at what they do. The same thing is true with candle making. And all of that starts with the fundamentals understanding how heat works, understanding how fragrance oil mixes in, understanding the technique for moving one thing to another. And some of those are covered in these lessons today, but essentially you won't get very far in candle making if you skip over the fundamentals and you treat it as a simplified version of what it really is. So the first lesson is to learn those fundamentals. And I'm not here to pitch my course, but it is a great resource, but so is YouTube, so is my blog. There's a lot of good things. There's a lot of bad information out there too, but you can pick up the fundamentals and it requires practice. The second lesson that every candle maker needs to learn is how to design and test their candles. Now, one of the most popular questions people ask me is, is this candle good enough? And they send me a picture of it burning for like the 30 minute mark. And I look at it and I say, I don't know. I, because truthfully, the only way to judge whether a candle is good or not is through testing. And your design is only successful if it meets one of two criteria. It first needs to burn safely. And second, it needs to perform well. Now, a safely burning candle meets requirements that in the U.S. we use this standard called ASTM. And I've done episodes on that. You can go check that out or you can read the resources below. But... Testing is not just merely lighting the wick and feeling how good it is. Testing is actually, safety testing is actually holding it to a set of criteria that it needs to pass. The candle has to burn safely. If you think about it, even if you're not selling candles, if you're just burning them at home, you don't want to put your entire property at risk or put someone's health at risk simply because you didn't know how to test the candle properly. Because testing means burning the candle either until it fails to be safe or until you get to the end of the life. And unfortunately, with how complicated candles are with different wicks, fragrance oils, containers, waxes, techniques, environments, all of that, the only way to know whether the candle truly is good, if your design really is good, is to safety test it all the way down. Only after you know that the candle is safe can you start a performance test, like how good is the hot throw? And that's a little more subjective. We've covered that before, but a lot of understanding how well it performs is putting it in rooms and judging it and giving it to your friends and seeing how they feel about it. And because scent is different for everyone, it's gonna hit a little differently. You're gonna need a lot of different data to really feel like if your design does pass the criteria that you're hoping it will. So the second lesson, design, Designing your candles and safety testing your candles is absolutely critical for understanding how to go. You can't just burn it for an hour and call it good. There's a lot more to it. The third lesson is temperature management. Temperature management is key because with candle making, you're taking wax, you're changing it from a state of a 
solid to a liquid and then back to a solid again. In the meantime, you're probably adding fragrance oil and then you're pouring it into some sort of container. And with state changes, it's all contingent on temperature. There's really two main temperatures that you need to pay attention to when you're making candles. The first is the maximum temperature that you're heating the wax to. Typically, you don't want to go over 200 degrees Fahrenheit, although some waxes require it, like palm. And the second key temperature is the pour temperature. And that's the temperature that you pour the wax into your vessel with. And there's little bits behind each of that, but being able to monitor what temperature your wax is at appropriately and understanding how to bring it down to that pour temperature the right way, these are little skills that you have to pick up, little techniques that you need in order to make sure that you're consistent with the way that you make candles. Sure, you could just wing it, melt your wax, add your fragrance oil and pour, not pay too much attention. But if you ever wanted to make that candle again, pour temperature especially is such a big factor on how that candle is going to turn out. So being able to manage those temperatures, which is measuring it and controlling it, that's a key skill for candle making. The fourth lesson is reading trends. And you really have to be good at reading trends, which is tapping into the industry by if you want to be successful, especially at selling candles, because sometimes scents are in, sometimes scents are out. Now, obviously, every year we have seasons, people like summer, spring, fall, winter. And then there's little things like the naming of the candles. For instance, in 2020, quarantine candles or quarantine themed candles were huge or sarcastic sayings. You know, people really enjoyed that stuff. It became saturated very quickly, but it definitely was a trend. So by being able to tap into that, learn what people like, learn what people don't like, you can tune a little bit of your work for that if you want. And all, or you can be evergreen. It's totally your call. But understanding what those trends are helps you to jump in or to stay out of them. The fifth lesson is huge for me, and that's short-term and long-term planning. Now, I'm a planning guy. I'm super type A. And for me, I'm not motivated every day to show up and do everything. And so a plan is that tool for me. In fact, the plan isn't a person. It, it doesn't have feelings. The plan will show up every single day. So I don't have to. I just have to see what the plan has that day and just execute it. So it takes a little time to put together a good plan. Now we're talking about your candle making plan, maybe your content strategy, maybe your outreach, maybe how soon in advance you want to do certain things with your business or with your craft. But planning is absolutely vital to making sure you know where you're going. A plan is you traveling mentally forward in time and making decisions on your behalf that you think will be beneficial so that when you arrive at that point, you already know what to do. So short term could be as short as today or this week. And long term could be as long as the end of the quarter or the end of the year. Like, where do you want to go with this thing? And I feel like a lot of people are hopping in and they just love candles, but they don't know what they want to do. And without a plan, you're relying on yourself to show up and make it happen. Some of us are better than that, but I think a lot of people end up burning out because they just, ugh, they just don't know what to do. They don't know where they want to go. So my best advice for planning is to just take, take a day, take a Saturday, take a Sunday night, close the door, shut the phone off and just sit down and think with a notepad in front of you or with a Google doc, whatever it is, and just figure out what, what do I want to do? What are 10 things I want to accomplish? And then those are the highest levels and then break it down from there as, as far as you need to, to know what the actionable steps are to get to that point. I'm a big plan guy. Every, every single Sunday night, I have a whiteboard. I sit down and I plan every single day. What are the things I want to do? Before every quarter of the year, I sit down and I plan out what my biggest goals are for that quarter. And I figure out what I need to do to make that happen. So for me, planning is everything. Like I can't show up. I don't have the strength. I don't have the willpower nor the motivation, though it does come at times. But the plan always shows up. It's reliable. I know it's going to be there as long as I put in the work on the front end to make sure it does. The sixth lesson is super key, especially if you made it through 2020, and that is inventory management. Inventory management refers to the ability to make sure that you have what you need to do your job, essentially. And there's two big ideas in inventory. The first is lead time. Lead time refers to how long it takes to get something from X to Y, whether you're driving there to pick it up or whether you're ordering it online. The last thing you wanna do is run out of those wicks that you need for that design 
because you tested it or run out of wax or run out of something, especially when you get a big order. The second one is availability. Availability refers to how easy it is for you to get a hold of those supplies. And with the shortages we experienced this year, availability was a big thing. My advice on availability is to do your best to spread that risk out among different suppliers. And what I mean is this, if you buy every single thing from a single supplier, you will live and die by that supplier's ability to get that to you. If your entire product line is based on a single wax from a single supplier, or let's say a fragrance oil, a set of fragrance oils from a certain supplier, if they reformulate or if they stop carrying it or if they're out, you're now at risk of not being able to do that. So you could spread that risk out. I call it portfolio management, kind of like finances. Take what you have as a product line and over time start to bury that risk in different suppliers that you can trust. They're not all gonna be out at the same time. So if you have fragrance oil A from supplier A, fragrance oil B and C from supplier B, that helps if fragrance oil A or if supplier A is having an issue, you can still get fragrance oil B and C. Hope that makes sense. Lesson number seven is label design. You could also call it graphic design because you can't just send a candle out there without any label. <laughs> like you have to describe it. You know, you have to know what it is. People have to be there. And the truth with labels is that's what really distinguishes your product a lot of times, in person especially. If you ever walk down an aisle and I hold two of the same product in front of you, but one of them has a cleaner, crisp, more alluring label, you're gonna think that one should be worth more simply because the graphic design is different. And I get that this is a skill that does take time to learn and you can absolutely go professional with this thing and pay people to do it, but it's more than just the appearance of the logo. It's also making sure that you have all the correct information. In the US, there's a very specific amount of information you need to have. And if you're interested in more about that, check out the links below. I do have a pretty thorough guide on combining and figuring out all that information for US. But label design is huge. And if you aren't able to put together a good graphic, something that describes your product, tells your story without being super wordy, that's gonna set you much further apart. The eighth lesson is budgeting and money management. And these are huge skills, right? Because your ability to meet your customer where they're at in their journey is vital to you making any sales at all. So money management includes things like pricing your product, to understanding your materials costs, to mapping out your overhead, to figuring out how much you wanna spend on ads. It's all of those things. And budgeting is how you're gonna wrap all of that together over the course of a period of time. Ultimately, you need to answer a single question. Am I making any money doing what I'm doing? This skill is for that. The ninth lesson is customer service. And this goes out the door very quickly all the time because all of us are really busy doing a lot of other things. And we can't forget about our customers. They're the most important people. If we didn't have customers, we didn't have a business. We wouldn't have anything we could do for anybody. Customer service can fall into three categories. Finding new customers, closing on those customers, and keeping the customers. And they all have nuances, but it's all about the life cycle of a customer and making sure that you're serving them and that you're giving them more value than they're giving you. Yes, they're cutting you a check for your work, but ultimately they're doing that because they believe what you're doing is worth it. Make sure you're treating them accordingly and always have a smile. Lesson number 10 is one that I wish I had going in, but it's learning and humility. Truthfully, candle making is hard. If you really try to take it beyond a candle making kit and learn and really adventure out, you're gonna fail a lot. But I like to rebrand these failures as non-successes because truthfully, these are all steps in you learning how to make candles or learning how to get that new design out or learning how to make that graphic design work or learning how to put your ad together. And this takes humility because if you go in with pride and you go in ready to conquer and you get, go in ready to win every single time you do something, just with life, it's not going to work out that way. It's going to be hard on your psyche and you're going to feel beaten down because you define success as at this really high level that's 
honestly, it's unrealistic. I bundle learning and humility together because the humility comes through the learning. If you treat these experiences as learning so that you can get better, so that you can grow, then you're going to be good. But if you don't feel like you have to learn because you have so much pride, then you're going to fall. And go ahead and do that because you'll make enough room for the rest of us to sell a few candles. Lesson 11 ties into the last one, and that's patience. <sighs> patience. Because candle making takes time. Not only learning and getting better at the craft, but you'll find that you want to burn these candles right away. You want results. You want to know right away if these things are going to work. But sometimes you have to let things bake. It's true from curing your candle where you pour it and let it sit to you put something out into the world and, and you want the universe to respond in kind and you might not get that answer right away. It may take a couple days. It may take a couple months. For some of us, it may take years. If you've ever tried to grow a following on a social media platform, you know that's not an overnight thing. There are some cases where people explode and, and it makes the rest of us feel a little insecure, but honestly, just keep doing good work. The numbers will follow. So you need to be patient with that. You need to focus not on the results, but on the work and on eventually absolutely on your happiness doing that work. So patience, absolutely vital. Lesson number 12 is focus. And it may sound a little lofty, but you need focus. If you're running a candle making business, for most of us, that means you're the CEO. You're doing branding, you're doing outreach, you're doing product creation, you're doing testing, you're doing development, you're doing shipping, you're every department in the company. Okay, that's a lot of work. So focusing, being able to learn how to divvy that up, to split that into reasonable chunks of work and just break it out and do it, helps you stop from being overwhelmed by all the responsibility that you have. For me, this means cutting my week up into different days with different focuses on them. For instance, today may be a day that I write a blog post. Tomorrow may be a day that I pour candles. And I use tools for that. I have a lot of digital tool suggestions. If you want to read about some of them, they're in the post below. But honestly, don't make it that complicated. You can just think about how am I going to segment this work so that I focus on one, maybe two things, but I recommend just one thing at a time until it's done. And or until a certain amount of it is done because there's a lot of things to do in a day. But being able to focus helps you stop from being overwhelmed. So track your work somewhere pull it into like an in progress column, knock it out of the park, and then start on the next thing. I do four different things in this area of my work to try to help it work pretty well. And the first is I use a Kanban board. A Kanban board, for those of you that aren't aware, is really just three columns on a board. The first column is to do, the second is doing, and the third is done. And I try to break out all the big things of work and put them in the to-do column and then move them across the board until they're done. And that way I can see exactly what I'm working on and I know that I'm supposed to focus on that one thing. The second piece of advice I have, which works really well for me, is the night before, like literally minutes before I go to bed, I will make a checklist of two or three or maybe just one item that I want to accomplish the next day. I start my entire day the night before. And that helps me understand exactly what I want to do. And when I get up in the morning, I don't have to put in the mental brain power to figure out what that thing is. I just start doing it. I passed Kevin already dealt with it for me. And the third thing that works for me is controlling what I can and stop trying to control the things that I can't. I can't control what people email me. I can't control how my customers behave. I can't control that there may be a shortage in a supply line somewhere that I just can't do anything about it. So I just have to move on. I just have to go forward. But if I try to put myself there mentally and try to control those things, it just adds stress. Lesson 13 is search engine optimization, also called SEO. And this is super big if you're selling on any platform. And most of us are either directly or indirectly selling on Google. So learning how to put together your content, put together your store, if you have a digital storefront, or put together your website in such a way that it brings in organic traffic because, yeah, you could pay for ads, but you could also just be awesome and have these platforms send you traffic. That's what SEO is all about. So curating your content, writing it in a certain way, taking your pictures in a certain way, 
using all the technical aspects of it. It's a very deep subject. I'm by no means an expert, but I've learned quite a bit about it so that I know that I can be a little more successful if I'm on Etsy or if I'm on Instagram or my website on Google. Like I want people to learn about candles. So I try to write it in such a way that people show up for that or YouTube even if you're on YouTube doing anything with your customers. Ultimately though, SEO is about adding value. So you wanna make sure that you're telling the right message for those platforms to understand and they can connect it to people who are looking for that. Lesson 14 is sales. Sales, sales, sales. Think about it this way. You want to have a business. Your business can only exist if you have customers. And you can only have customers if you make sales. For the most part, we're not running on profits here. We're not running on donations, although there are some of us that are doing that. But ultimately, you need sales. So sales has to be the lifeblood of what you do. And sales is a huge topic, right? It goes everything from lead generation to follow-up strategies to product placement to being at the right place at the right time with the right colors, the right fragrances, the right graphic design. Like it all comes down to sales. So no matter where you're at in your journey, this is a skill set of its own. Sure, you can learn candle making. You can master those fundamentals, but if you don't understand sales, you're, you're not going to get very far, unfortunately. So the best advice I have with sales is to buy a book, just do a bunch of research. And kind of with candle making, you have to test some things out. You have to try out a few things and learn to move on from the things that don't work and learn to stick with and improve the things that do work. Lesson number 15, I found super valuable, and that's networking. Networking in this context, I'm talking about connecting with other candle makers. A lot of us are in some Facebook groups. We watch all the YouTube videos. We do all that. You're, you're here watching me. You're still here. So thank you. But networking allows us to be part of that community. Like being part of something is a huge part of feeling important in culture. And knowing that there's other people out there that struggle with the same things you do, that are trying to learn the same things that you are or have been where you've been, that's huge. So I stress the huge importance of taking part of that community. Giving back more than you get will ultimately satisfy you a lot more than you realize if you haven't learned that life lesson yet at all. And so with candle making, it's awesome because you can cheer other people on, you can help assist if you've been there. If you're a newbie, it's really good for getting advice to talk to people who have been there before. And ultimately, this whole thing of life, this whole thing of candle making is about being part of something bigger than yourself. So being part of that community gives us an in for things like finding people to help test our candles or just offering some solicited opinions on like the latest label design or part of reading trends is seeing what people are doing. So networking is huge. And I think the hashtag is community over competition. So live it. Lesson number 16 is learning how to relieve stress. Stress is very big, especially for a lot of us younger candle makers, because honestly, there's just so much to do. And it's hard to figure out what you need to do or how to separate life and work because a lot of us are doing this at home and it's taking up space and you can see it everywhere you go. You can't even get away from it. Or, oh my gosh, there's this huge order and I'm just running on three hours, four hours of sleep and, and it's just overwhelming. So my lesson, what I've learned is I need to figure out ways to unload, to just kind of let my hair down. I don't have much, but let my hair down and have a little fun every once in a while. For me, I'm very driven by if I can reach a certain threshold, then I'm going to reward myself with an experience or with some cool new toy. I think my last one was a VR headset. Like I have a ton of fun with that thing. And I don't remember what the milestone was, but it helps me provide a little context to the work I do. I know that I'm working towards something and that helps relieve some of the stress, but ultimately it's going to be different for every single person. Some people see a psychologist. Some people just need to talk it out with their family. Some people need to take a break every once in a while because you just don't know when to stop. 
If you're that person, I encourage you to find that time. Make time for yourself because ultimately, you are the most important asset for your business. Not your wax, not your supply chain, not your Google Docs. You. Take time for you. Make sure that you're fully charged, rested, ready to go. Sometimes you have to grind and grind culture is real. It's, it's not for everybody. But sometimes you have to know when to step away and take time to invest in yourself. Lesson number 17 for me is copywriting. Now, I enjoyed writing a little bit in school. Not that much. I wasn't a good writer. As I grew older, I found that I do kind of like writing, but it was this weird style. But copywriting is how you're delivering your message for your sales. And this could cover anything from what you're putting on your pop-up stand in person to what you're writing in your Etsy description. But copywriting is really four different things. You're telling your customer, one, how are you gonna solve their problems? Two, how are you gonna conquer their fears? Three, how are you gonna tell your story to them? And four, how are you gonna build trust? Ultimately, those are your four goals when you write out copy to make your customers eventually buy your product. Lesson number 18 I think is really interesting and it's branding. And branding gets a lot of misrepresentation. I feel like a lot of people think branding is what you put in your logo or what you put as a subtitle for your business or how you name yourself. And arguably because that's kind of colloquially how we do it, Sure, that's branding. But to me, this lesson of branding is your reputation. Your brand is what people think of what you do. It's how they judge your work. Now, if you think about Starbucks, they have a brand. The brand is what we believe. You know, they're a convenient, cool place to hang out and get some coffee. You know, not a bar, not a breakfast joint. They can get some coffee there. Their brand is really strong. And it's what us as customers, what us as a society has defined for them. Now for you, your brand is gonna be the value you deliver to the people that you want to deliver that to. And they define your brand, not you. Ultimately, branding is about how can you deliver the most value to your target customers. Lesson number 19 is product photography. And this is an area I struggled with for a long time, but. If you think about what you typically see on a young Etsy shop, those pictures are not pretty. Like, sure, you took your smartphone and you just snapped it, but photography is not only a deep subject, but it's not too hard to break into a little bit. You can be kind of good at it without going ham. And really this means learning how to set up your lighting, learning how to set up a scene and taking a picture. You don't need the most fancy camera, most smartphones, they're gonna take plenty of good pictures for you. You don't need to go crazy on that. But do yourself a favor and learn a little bit about lighting, learn a little bit about the different types of pictures that candle makers should be taking. If you want, I've got a link below. But just get kind of good at it. You don't have to be a master. You don't have to you know, get hired by Hollywood by the virtue of your photography, but at least don't make it look cringy. My last lesson for you, if you've made it this far, Thank you so much. But the last lesson I've learned is discipline. Discipline is underrated. And someone who is disciplined and not very skilled versus someone who's not disciplined and very skilled, I'll take the unskilled disciplined person every time because I know they don't have a ceiling. They're gonna grow and grow and grow and grow. So if you don't think you're a very disciplined person, this is an area that you probably wanna focus on. And I thought I was disciplined and I learned that you know, once the hard work shows up, you really have to buckle down and get into it. Discipline is what makes it worth it. Discipline is you showing up every day, no matter what, even if you don't have a plan, even if you don't have a plan, even though I recommend that, discipline is how you can show up and say, all right, I'm here, I showed up. That's 90% of the battle because once you're there, you can figure out what to do, even if you didn't think it through in advance. Discipline is the answer for that. And ultimately, you didn't come this far just to come this far. So stick with it. I encourage you because if you're watching this video, I assume you're pretty serious about what you're doing. So I want you, yes, you, I want you to stick with it. I love what you're doing. I think you're providing value. And if you're just learning, keep learning. Keep learning because that is so critical. Those are the 20 lessons that I've learned as a candle maker. And that's 20 of probably multiple thousands of lessons that 
Everyone's going to learn, especially me as a candle maker. So if you made it this far, you're a beginner, you're learning, and you want to know how to take your craft to the next level, if you really want to bootstrap your skills, consider taking my course. There's a link below. It's called Soy Wax Candle Making Fundamentals, but it really applies to container candle making, regardless if you're using soy wax or some other wax at all. We cover a lot of material. You walk away with a lot of worksheets and everything I've heard about the course, people really like it. I'm continually updating it as I need to, to bring in new content and bring in new lessons. But if you're trying to get there, it's probably the best thing I can recommend outside of just taking a long time, reading everything and watching every video online. This is a guided effort to bring you to the next level. That being said, that's all I have for you today. I hope you have a great week. I hope you make beautiful candles and I will see you in the next episode.